Hey kids, all right, this is lesson 25, getting near the end of module two. Um, so the objective is, oh, and I have to apologize, yesterday's video or lesson 24 was just a little too long. There was so much in it and then it cut me off and I'm like, oh well, um, hopefully you got to see the last thing and just copy that or pause the video right before it was done. We're gonna make these go faster. So objective today, decimal division with two digit divisors. But the most important part is reasoning about the placement of the decimal. So we're really just thinking a lot today. Um, thinking about the size of the numbers, the numbers as they relate to each other. So what is division? It is sharing the whole. So depending on the size of this whole thing, the divisor can, if, these, if this is big enough, Okay, if it's bigger than the divisor, then you're gonna end up with a whole number. But we're gonna start working with dividends that are small, dividends that are less than the divisor. So what does that mean? It, some people would say, we can't do that, we can't do it. And I'll say, yes, you can, you can divide anything. And uh, we just end up getting numbers that are in uh, decimal fractions or a fraction of one. So that's okay, we can work with any size numbers. So these are some sample problems. Hopefully your teachers will go over them with you before you start the lesson in the book. But if they didn't go over them with you, here they are. It's just an opportunity to practice. First, we're gonna be rounding. So round the divisor first, then use a multiple of this uh, for your new dividend. So you can see that this is a pretty big number. It's about 40, this is close to 20. So 40 divided by 20 is two, easy peasy round the divisor first to 20, but this is nowhere near 20 or 40. So what would I use? Well, let's just drop off all this decimal tiny fraction amount and just use four. So when you have something that is this small, you can take it apart and do four divided by two for two, but I still have to divide by 10. So today we're gonna to go back to a couple lessons, so I think it was lesson 16, where you can take apart, take the 10 or the 100 out of your divisor and then just do some shifting of your digits. That's uh, the same thing that happens here. Um, we have a number that is 63, okay, with some change, and then round the divisor first and we see what we end up with is something that's less than the divisor. And so 63 divided by seven is nine. That's my easy fact, but don't forget to divide by 10. Now, if you're thinking about the size of the numbers, if this is one, I could divide one into 10 parts. That's what nine tenths is. So if I have 63 divided by 70, this is bigger. So my answer should be less than one. And so that's why I wanted to show you this. It's just less than one, the size of the numbers. Same thing on this sample problem. It's roughly 40 and my dividend is about 12. So 12 being divided into 42 pieces. So now you should be able to see, well, this is gonna be a very small piece for my answer. So when you get 3 tenths, that should make sense. Okay, so those are the notes for today and I hope they are helpful. And in your book, Lesson 25, Problem Set, we're gonna be estimating the quotients. And we always start with the divisor first. So it would be 80. I, I always like to put it below just so it's, um, uh, it's closer and it makes more sense to me, but we're gonna be moving them out. So round the divisor first and Again, I like to say, let's just drop off the change. But when you have a compatible number where there's the first two pieces are a multiple of this number, you can use that. So we're gonna use the first two or an easy quick multiple so that I recognize when I do take this apart, Okay, I'm gonna take my 3.2, we'll just leave off the zero, I don't need that anymore. Divide it by eight, then divide by 10. And so this is that quick, easy fact. Remember it's 32 tenths, 
that I'm dividing by eight ones. Okay, now that's going to give me my answer of tenths, and it's going to be four tenths, but I still have to divide by ten. And when I divide by ten, I get my final answer of four hundredths. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, writing and stretching it out, but you can do it. So divide or round the divisor first, and then look at the first two digits to see if it's a multiple of this number. So I would actually use 360 and divide by 60. And now we have a super easy problem with our offsetting zeros. If I could divide both sides by 10, end up with 36 divided by 6, you see you get 6. And that's your final answer. Round the divisor first. Now, 7 is not divisible by 3, but I could just change this to 6, and it would be pretty close. Um, I could also use a multiple uh, over 7, like 72, but I want to keep it close. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to 6. And when I, when I look at this, I don't need to put the point zero, 0, because it's just six ones. So I can do six divided by 30, okay? Which would be six divided by three, but also divide by 10. This is a quick, easy answer that gives me two, but I need to divide by 10 still, don't forget. And then when I do that, I will get two tenths. And that's your answer. Next one, round the divisor first. And I'm looking for a number that is compatible with three. And 85 is pretty close to 90. I'm just gonna drop that right off of there. And this one has a big dividend when compared with my divisor. So I could have uh, the offsetting zeros, which really leaves me with nine divided by three for three. Again, super easy on that one. Now this one round the divisor first to about 30. And I look at my whole number and I say, I'm not gonna round up, I'm just gonna leave this at 27 whole. Some people will say, what about 30 and 30? Sure, that works too. They're very close to each other. If you use this one, you would do 27 divided by three divided by 10. And then that would give you nine divided by 10. And that would give you nine tenths. And other people would end up with this one, which would give you one. And nine tenths is very close to one. So that makes perfect sense that these would be reasonable estimates. And as always in the teacher's edition, it's gonna say answers may vary. So you may not have the same answer as your neighbor or your uh, classmates. Now here in the next part, we have a lot of the same digits, but with different decimal placement. So we're gonna estimate the quotient in A, right here. Use your estimated quotients to estimate B and C. So we have to do it right here so that we can uh, do a good job on B and C. Round the divisor first, okay? Now I have my 40, but I wanna have something that's close to a multiple of four that's close to 71. So I'm gonna use 8.00, 8.00 divided by 40. So what can I do here? I'm gonna change this to be eight divided by four. This is eight ones divided by four divided by 10, okay? And then we have, that gives us two then divide by 10, and that gives us 2 tenths. So our first answer is what we're gonna look at when we compare to this one. Now this was seven and 16 hundredths, so we rounded to eight. This is 716. So instead of rounding to eight ones, we're gonna round it to 800. 800 divided by 40. So this is, the whole numbers make it really easy, okay? And when I estimate here, I'm going to have 
20. Also, think about this. If this one has 7 and this one has 700, this one is 100 times greater, right? Than this one. So take this, multiply by 100, and what do you get? You get this. So, sorry, that's kind of mushed together. If you recognize the connection between these numbers, that 20 is 100 times greater than 2 tenths, then you don't actually have to go through this step because you're going to use your estimated quotient to uh, work with this one. Now, thinking about this right here, if this is 7 and this is 700 and this is 7 in the tens place, so here we got 2 tenths, here we got 20, what should I get here? Same divisor. Yes, we should get something in between. So I would have two ones. Now let's show you, let's do it together. Four, four, 40, sorry, and 80. Okay, so if this is what I end up with, I thinking ahead, 80 divided by four divided by 10, okay, equals or yields. 20 divided by 10, and that's our 2. And so it just is supposed to make sense when you're comparing the sizes of the numbers to each other. And I hope it does make sense for you. Next one, number 3, A and B, A and B, A and B. Edward bikes the same route to and from school each day. After 28 school days, he bikes a total distance of 389.2 miles. Estimate how many miles he bikes in one day. So let's take our total number of miles, 389.2, and we'll divide it by our 28 days. But we don't actually have to do the real division. We're just going to estimate. So when you round the divisor first, uh, people might round in different ways, but I can't help but see that this is very close to 39, which is a multiple of 3. So rounding 389 to 390 would be very easy for us. And we can also then offset the zeros and have 39 divided by 3 to get approximately 13 miles in one day. Okay, which is pretty nice. Then, if Edward continues his routine of biking to school, about how many days altogether will it take him to reach a total distance of 500 miles? He's pretty close. He's almost to 400, so he just needs 100 and a little bit more. So if I was to take my total distance, my wishful thinking, and divide it by, say, the approximate miles per day. And we're still, this is just kind of an approximate. I can leave this at 500 and approximately guess around 10 because we're just approximating. Okay, then I would have 50 divided by one, which is 50. Okay, so about 50 days. Now, I don't have to do it this way. I could um, change my estimate. I could have, um, let's change, let's do 450 divided by 15. So this goes down and this goes up. This is still a compatible number for 15, 15, 30, 45, okay? So that would be 30. And then what if I had, um, something in between. So I could also come up with 52 divided, like what I'm trying to say is you have multiple options here and people will not always be getting the same exact answer when you estimate. So the difference between 30 and 50 is quite great and you may end up with something like if you recognize that you leave it at 13 and then you could use 52. So most people, most fifth graders won't recognize it, but some will. So huzzah, you can use that as your approximately uh, multiple of four. 
a multiple of 13 times 4. So really just totally depends on what you see it as, but this is perfectly fine. Um, Xavier or Javier, or however you would like to say his name. Maybe you know someone with that name and they say it a certain way. Uh, I'm going to say Xavier because that reminds me of my students. Uh, goes to the store with $40, lucky. He spends $38.60 on 13 bags of popcorn. About how much does one bag of popcorn cost? So if we take our 3860 and we divide it by the 13, we this is approximating, so everybody won't do it the same way. I look at this and say that's 39. And I don't even have to change my 13 because I'm looking at this and going two, six, three, nine. Like I'm just adding that three times in my head and I know that 39 is a multiple. Some people will take the 3860 divided by 13 and round this to 10 and round this to 40. And that's perfectly acceptable. So um, if you round this to uh, 39 divided by 13, you're gonna get approximately $3. If you round it to this one, you're going to get approximately $4. And both of those are fine for each bag. And so does he have enough money for another bag? Use your estimate to explain. So really, I mean, you can look at um, the amount that he has and then the amount that he already spent. And I could say, no, he doesn't have enough money because even if the lowest estimate were true, he would be over $40 even with one more. If we round this way, he's going to be way over. So, no. Easy answer there. He needs more money. And it he's it just depends on when you do the actual amount and you can't use averages when you go to the theater they're gonna say exactly pay this much so he needs more money um, he's gonna need approximately two to three dollars more okay so I hope this is helpful a lot shorter than yesterday huzzah and I hope you guys have a wonderful day if this was helpful hit subscribe and um, hopefully I'll see you on the next video ciao